Hey, hey, all right, go ahead and pull out your DNA control mechanism notes. Um, make sure you're taking extra notes and highlighting on your notes as we go through this. Okay, so this lecture is all about how DNA starts and stops protein synthesis. And so a really good word that you want to write at the top of this is, or words, DNA regulation. How does DNA regulate, regulate or control protein synthesis? So how does DNA control protein synthesis? So, um, like your cells know to make certain proteins at certain times. So you're not making antibodies all the time unless you're sick. You're not making insulin all the time unless you have high blood sugar. And so your cells have to start making proteins and then stop making proteins. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is an operon. Okay, an operon, um, this shows you um, Jacob and Monoid discovered this in 1961. You can kind of see them there looking at it. And uh, this is only in bacteria. So where it says prokaryotes, I want you to write in. A prokaryote is, and you should already know this, so this is just to kind of help you remember, a prokaryote is a bacteria, right? And that's a cell with no organelles. Okay, so prokaryotes have operons, and what that is, it's a, a start and a stop for protein synthesis. Let me tell you this, when I was younger, when I was a little kid, um, we didn't have... Google or cell phones or anything like that. So if you didn't know someone's phone number, you called. Well, you looked it up in the phone book. But if you didn't have a phone book or you couldn't find a phone book, um, you could call uh, like 411, which was information. Uh, or, or you could talk to an operator. And Except we didn't really do that a whole lot because it cost money. I remember, you know, it was better to look it up in the phone book because to call the operator cost, you know, 75 cents or something like that. And so, operon, they control, operators, that was who controlled who you got to talk to or your phone. Okay, so the operon in prokaryotes. Check this picture out. DNA, right here, if you're looking, just right here. DNA makes RNA, makes a protein, right? You can see DNA makes mRNA, makes the proteins. Okay, and so this is really just showing you... Um, that there isn't a repressor. A repressor would stop. A repressor stops protein synthesis. Right? So there is not a repressor right here. Now, if, so you can see even on the right-hand side, DNA makes mRNA makes the polypeptide, which is, you know, another word for protein. Now, let's take all this off. If this red repressor, it's inactive right there, bound right there, if it would bind right there, then that means it would be active then. And if the repressor bound right here to this yellow at the operator, if the repressor binds to the operator, then it won't make the protein. It won't make the RNA. So the repressor prevents transcription from occurring. Okay, so look at this next picture. Okay, this is showing you exactly what we just looked at. DNA, RNA polymerase goes down and that makes RNA. And then the RNA goes to the ribosome and that makes the protein, yes? Okay, now look at this. If the repressor is bound to the DNA, like on the right-hand side, then RNA polymerase can't go down. So what's made? Nothing. No RNA is made. It's almost like there's a Lego sitting on the DNA. That red repressor is like a Lego sitting on the DNA. And when the Lego's there, RNA polymerase won't go down. Okay, so let me, one more thing I want to show you from this picture. If there, this repressor right here is inactive. When the orange tryptophan binds to the repressor, then it's active. So... If you look, this one right here is inactive because the orange is not touching the red. Okay, and then this one right here is active. 
And so when the orange molecule, when tryptophan, binds, and then it binds, so when the orange is there, it binds to the DNA. So basically the orange is like an on-off switch. Orange binds to the red, binds to DNA. If the orange doesn't, it doesn't bind to the DNA. So the orange really controls it. And so that's um, tryptophan, and that's why we call this the tryptophan, or the trip operon, T-R-P operon. Okay, so this one's opposite. So really, on these, you just have to look at the picture. Okay, so you got this one, you just don't need a co-repressor. On the left-hand side, DNA makes RNA, makes a protein. Okay, well, what if that repressor binds? Now what made? Nothing. RNA polymerase can't go down the DNA, so no RNA is made here. Okay, look at this one. DNA, whoops. DNA makes RNA makes a protein. So, so this operon is on, right? The transcription is occurring. Okay, now look right here. If you look at the red right here, before the orange bound to the red, and that, that was the trip operon. So this one's 100% opposite. The trip operon binds, and that, that turns on the repressor. Okay, well, this one, um, you can see, is opposite. Because right here, this is inactive. So if there's no green, then the red will bind. Okay, so this is, instead of being the trip operon, this is the lack operon. So it's just two different operons. Okay, but in both scenarios, let's make sure you got this. In both scenarios, when the repressor binds to DNA, transcription does not occur. When the repressor binds to the DNA, transcription does not occur. So the only difference in the two situations is whether the repressor is active or inactive. Okay, let's go back and look. Right here, the repressor was active without... Whoops. Okay, right here, the repressor is active without the green. The repressor is active without the lactose. Okay, here... The repressor is active with the tryptophan. So that's the only thing that's different. But the repressor still stops DNA when it's active. Okay. Okay, so operons, I just want you to know from operons, they're in prokaryotes and they control transcription. A repressor is a molecule that stops transcription. It binds to the operator and stops transcription. Okay. And inducer is a molecule that binds to the repressor and turns the repressor on. Okay, your notes say this is negative feedback. Negative feedback. And you really should know what negative feedback is. Negative feedback is when a process in your body, like your blood sugar goes up, and then your body brings the blood sugar down. Your temperature goes up, you start sweating, your body brings your temperature down. And so really what's happening right here is when you make enough of the lactose, then you don't make lactose anymore. So just like uh, ATP in glycolysis, when you make enough ATP, glycolysis stops because that's negative feedback. So beside the word negative feedback, I want you to write in the word homeostasis because negative feedback is how your body regulates that stable state. You want to keep everything right on medium and that's homeostasis. Okay, so that's your operons. Next, we're going to look at something that's really in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes and that is transposomes. Whoops, here we go. We got to go back. Transposomes. Transposomes are jumping genes. Okay, so Barbara McClintock discovered these in the in the forties. Um, but what basically it's the coolest thing ever. Um, your DNA will actually co come unattached and reattach somewhere else. And so if you're looking at your DNA and it's like all like this, well, just this section right here is gonna 
move, and it's going to be right there. And that means it's not right there anymore. How cool is that? So transposomes are just when genes move. They move around so you can make a different protein. And uh, there's two types. Basic insertion is really just where you move one. Well, just like what I just showed you. Okay, and then um, a more complex would be, let's see, let me get you another color going. You got yellow and orange. They're going to switch places. So two different genes move. So um, transposonase is the enzyme that allows the DNA to jump from location to uh, location. So basic insertion is just where one moves. But it can be where two move. This is another example um, of common ancestry. If prokaryotes have transposomes, if eukaryotes have transposomes, that means bacteria and trees and every organism has transposomes. And that leads some people to think that there could be um, a relationship or a common ancestor. Okay, next we got eukaryotes. First of all, let's remember... When we did mitosis, okay, I don't know why that's green, just go with it. Okay, when we did mitosis before, we, you know, we, we drew it out and we said this was the chromatin, right? Okay, and when is DNA in chromatin form? DNA is in chromatin form during interphase, right? And interphase is when a cell is not dividing. So interphase is not dividing. Well, then your cell coiled up into chromosomes, and that's when the cell divided. Do you remember that? Okay, so here's what I want you to draw. Chromatin That's the DNA that's loosely coiled. DNA best for protein synthesis. And DNA replication. Okay, chromosomes... Is the DNA best for cell division? Okay, so looking at your notes, now this will make sense. Um, how does DNA control protein synthesis in eukaryotes? Okay, so DNA that is wound up, like for mitosis, chromosomes. So beside A, write the word chromosomes. Is not able to do transcription. Protein synthesis, right? The first part was where DNA makes the RNA. Okay, and then on B, it says the DNA that is unwound right in for me. Chromatin, like in interphase, is able to be transcribed, is able to be, look right here, is able to make RNA. The DNA makes the RNA and the RNA makes the protein. Okay, so uh, another example would be how... Doo -doo -doo, Here's your picture. DNA makes RNA. And then remember, the RNA's got to be modified. 5 prime cat, poly A tail, splice the sons, remove the junk. So right in beside introns, junk. Remember, eukaryotic cells also control the removal of the junk. Okay. And then also, of course you remember... My magic trick. Oh, there's the introns being removed. The junk. And that's the spliceosomes doing it, right? You remember spliceosomes? Okay. Uh, and you know what? This is a typo right here. I just didn't want you to see this and be confused. This should say transcription. When DNA makes RNA, that's transcription. So that should say transcription. When DNA makes RNA, it's transcription. Okay. Okay. And that should say transcription too. Chaperonin, my magic trick, right? The protein went into the Clorox bottle, aka chaperonin. Okay, if D, if the protein is folded and the ER is going out of the cell, 
So look right here. If the protein's folded in the ER, it's moving out. What's kind of what kind of proteins are going out? Antibodies are going out. Insulin is going like going out of the cell into the body, like into the blood. Um, what kind of proteins are staying inside? Chaperonins are going to stay inside. Histones. Remember, histones is what DNA is wrapped around. Um, spindle fibers. Those are proteins that are staying in the cell. So chaperone, look, you can remember this, chaperone in the cell, okay, endoplasmic reticulum, I don't have a way to remember that, but if you can remember chaperone and you can remember this one, the rough ER is moving out, is leaving the cell, leaving the cell, Ex ooh, I got it, exiting the cell, and I just thought of that, huh, okay, so that's just another way to control protein synthesis. Okay, so before you put your notes away, not yet, not yet. There we go, now it's white. Okay, I want you to make me a Venn diagram of this and uh, make it really good, like make it really detailed. Okay, so you're going to put, um, you're going to put regulation and you're going to have That's a good circle if I've ever seen one. Prokaryotes, eukaryotes, and then of course the middle would be both. And so instead of like just writing transposomes, which would go there, I want you to write transposomes dash jumping genes. So take your time and really make this good. Use your notes and make sure that you understand um, how to fill out this Venn diagram. Let me know if you have any questions tomorrow. I hope this was helpful.